and welcome to your Travelling Together video guide, how to explore the world without ruining your relationship. I'm Claire Brumwell, the Relationist, creator of Love, Polarity and Passion.com and I'm here to share with you some advice, some insights and some valuable tools that are going to help transform your Travelling Together experience. Now why do we need this? Travelling Together is supposed to be fun, right? It was supposed to have uh, exciting times, explore the world, adventures. Why is it that we need something to help keep us connected in our relationship while we're traveling rather than creating conflict? Well, unfortunately, traveling together with somebody who you're close with can cause some real challenges. 62% of couples who go traveling together say that they fight and argue daily. 79% say they have two major arguments, two major blowouts over the course of a trip. And 12% of couples say that when they come back, the relationship is over. The challenges and the stress that they experience with the challenges of traveling together actually caused their relationship to end. Now, as I said, traveling together is supposed to be fun. Relationships are supposed to be enjoyable. Why is it that when we put these two, two things together, it can cause so many stress and challenges? Well, the fact of the matter is, is that there are two things in life which are gonna help you get to know yourself better and bring up your stuff more than anything in life. Those are traveling and having relationships. So when you put the two together, it amplifies everything and makes it even bigger. When you travel with somebody, you're traveling maybe 24 hours a day, seven days a week with the same person. You're spending all of your time together. Maybe you've gone from being in a situation where you were only living together, but you worked separately, so you had a, a small amount of time together in the morning and a small amount of time together in the evening, and the rest of the time you were in your own separate worlds, to being together all of the time. It may be that you're not even living together, you actually live separately, and you go from leading very separate lives to actually coming together and spending all of this time in the same space. Well, what it does is it puts a magnifying glass on your relationship. It highlights any of the challenges that you're already experiencing and it amplifies everything. So the, the good times that you experience, the fun times you experience get amplified and they become even more fun and exciting. Unfortunately, the challenges also get amplified. They, the, the challenges seem bigger, they seem harder to deal with, they seem more stressful because we're in somebody where that we don't necessarily know very well. We're in a situation where we can't necessarily get away from the other person and have our separate space. We're away from friends and family, people that we would normally go to when we have challenges. We're in a situation where we don't know the area, if we wanna go and have a bit of a time out, we don't know where to go, so we tend to stay and it becomes this pressure cooker that if there's a tiny challenge, something that normally wouldn't become a big deal, just seems to get bigger and bigger and bigger until it explodes. And that's why we end up with these situations where when we're supposed to be traveling the world and having an amazing time and experience with the other, actually it can create a lot of stress and a lot of challenge. The other thing that I want to share about in this Traveling Together video guide is that this Traveling Together video guide is not just for people who are traveling with their partners. This guide is for if you're gonna be traveling with a friend, if you're gonna be traveling with your significant other, if you're gonna travel with your husband, your wife, your family, or even if you're a single who is traveling by themselves, but potentially may want to connect with other people for periods of time while you're traveling, which I know as somebody who has traveled by myself at times and with people and a combination of traveling with people where we've got other people along for the journey and then moved apart at various points. This, what's the, the insights and the guidance and the tools that I'm gonna to be sharing in this, in this uh, Traveling Together video guide are gonna be invaluable no matter who you are, no matter what kind of traveling you're looking to do, whether you're looking to do it by yourself, with the potential to then maybe connect with other people, whether you're traveling with your life partner who you've been with for years, whether you're traveling with somebody who you've only just met, with a friend, with a family member, the tools and tips and advice and guidance I'm sharing in this are gonna be invaluable to every single one of those experiences. The Traveling to get Together tapes are gonna be sharing from people who have been in each of those situations to be able to give you advice and guidance from their own experience experience. The Travelling Together checklist is going to be able to help you to understand the conversations to have regardless of who you're traveling with, regardless of whether you're traveling by yourself and then looking to connect with somebody else, or whether you're traveling with a person who you live and work with 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 
the whole point of putting this, this traveling together guide is that quite often, even when you're traveling by yourself around the world, you're never really traveling by yourself because you're always connecting with people. You're in a hostel, you start a conversation with somebody, you decide, oh, hang on a second, we're going to the same place next. How about we, we work together and we, and we decide we want to go on the next part of our journey together? Some of the biggest challenges I've had when traveling with somebody have actually been when I've been traveling by myself and I've looked to connect with someone, even just for a short period of time. One of my biggest disasters that I can remember in terms of my, uh, my traveling history was um, I was traveling in, uh, um, in Fiji and I was moving to Hawaii. And although I was traveling with some friends, actually that section of our trip we were doing separately. I was gonna do that part on my own. So I connected with somebody who was doing the same flight as me and we, we decided we were gonna go from Fiji to Hawaii together and we were gonna spend some time. Um, we were gonna find the same hostel and it gave me that sense of security of like, at least I'm not doing this on my own, I'm doing this with somebody and that was really great. But our expectations in terms of what that looked like and our expectations in terms of what was acceptable and what was not acceptable in terms of sharing a, a dorm room together and, and those sorts of things, we didn't discuss that in advance. And I had some of the most challenging experiences I've had when I went through that, when I was um, traveling by myself and looked to connect with somebody for a short period of time. Likewise, I've had massive challenges when I've been um, traveling with somebody who I've been together with for years, who we've lived together with, and then we've gone traveling and it's changed the experience completely. So the whole point of being putting together this traveling together video guide is for you to understand that regardless of your situation, regardless of what kind of traveling and what kind of relationship, there's something in this for you. There are some parts that are gonna be more relevant to an intimate partnership. There are going to be some parts that are completely relevant irrespective of what kind of relationship it is. My point is I want to try and get something across to you that is going to help you in any kind of traveling experience, traveling with any kind of travel partner. That's the point, that's the beauty and that's what I'm trying to create here is something that's going to enhance your traveling experience and your relationship regardless of your situation. Now, why am I sharing with you about this? What do I know about this and why on earth should you listen to me about this? Well, I'm, my name is Claire Bramwell. I'm known as a relationist. I'm a relationship specialist who works with couples and singles all over the world, men and women, to help them transform their relationships. But this was not always my path. In fact, the reason that I, I'm able to share so, so well on how to transform relationships is because I know every relationship mistake in the book because at one point or another, that's exactly what I did. I've made every mi mistake you can imagine in relationships. You see, I have not been successful for the majority of my life when it comes to relationships. I, uh, I was very, very, um, uh, when I was very, very young, I went to a all girls school and I was bullied quite severely. And as a result of that, I, I felt I didn't trust women. I didn't, felt I didn't trust girls. So I wanted to surround myself with boys to feel accepted. And the challenge was in order to be accepted by the, by the guys, I became one of the boys. I fitted in, I walked like them, I talked like them, I dressed like them, I told jokes with them. Um, it became my way of fitting in and fe feeling like I finally belonged somewhere. And I took on this very, very male persona. Uh, in fact, it was a bit of a running joke in my family that uh, when I was a teenager, there was this um, piece in the newspaper that said that um, girls, um, uh, girls tend to call all of their friends by name and boys tend to have nicknames for their friends. And because my friends were known as Taz and Dungy and Bushnell, um, it was a bit of a running joke that actually I was more of a boy when it came to my friendships than I was a girl. Uh, I went on to university and I studied IT and I knew exactly how to fit in because I was surrounded by guys again and I, I fitted in by being exactly the same as they were uh, and I didn't earn my stripes at university because I knew about IT or computers. Um, I earned my stripes because I bonded with the guys in the way the guys bonded. I could drink them all under the table. And I went on, I worked in IT, I worked in video games, I worked in the media, all very, very high pressure, competitive, male-driven environments. And the more that I entered into these environments, the more I realized that I, the more I became more masculine, I took on more masculine personas in order to prove myself and fit in. I became very competitive, very driven, very goal orientated, and I was determined every step of the way to prove myself. And I was very successful in business. Unfortunately, I also brought those qualities to my relationships. I was competitive. I wanted to prove that I was always right. I wanted to fix everything and make everything right. I wanted to keep control of 
everything. Now, I don't know whether you are aware of this, but those aren't qualities that people look, that men tend to look for in their ideal woman. Who knew? And I went through relationship after relationship after relationship. It was a disaster area. Um, I went through some relationships that seemed great at the beginning and then they just flatlined into where we became more like buddies or roommates than intimate partners. I had some relationships that were just drama, drama, drama. It was full of arguments, full of conflict, um, always something dramatic going on. And then I had other relationships that were downright toxic with um, manipulative style behavior. And I had, I had a moment um, uh, quite some years ago where I really did hit rock bottom. I, had, um, I was at an event in London and I got uh, trampled. And when I say I got trampled, I don't mean that it's got a bit raucous on the way to the ladies room at the lunch break. Someone from the stage threw a frisbee into the audience and said, this is worth £20,000 worth of one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. And unfortunately, I was underneath it when it came down. The challenge was is that I hadn't been expecting to catch it, so I hadn't been trying to catch it. So I was just watching it. And as the crowd swarmed to catch it, I got knocked to the ground.